Oncoplastics reconstruction refers to any procedure where a plastic surgeon and a, a traditional breast oncologist are working together. So the most common variant of that would be a breast reduction and a lumpectomy at the same time. So for the patients that choose to undergo a breast conserving uh, route, meaning a lumpectomy with radiation, then we can potentially do a breast reduction or a breast lift at the same time to reshape the breast, make it look more uniform, and then at the same time we can do a symmetry procedure on the other side to give, to give symmetry. So oncoplastic reconstruction is a play on words that essentially means oncoplastic, meaning plastic surgery techniques used in oncologic resections. So in a breast, you're combining a breast surgical oncologist and the techniques and talents of a plastic surgeon to decide how the tumor is removed and what to do after the tumor is removed uh, and how to shape the breast better. So candidates, uh, many candidates are eligible for it, usually larger breasted women or women with uh, breast nipple complex that is a little bit lower and they want a breast lift. And those are excellent uh, candidates for oncoplastic uh, reconstruction. Those patients have to have radiation and generally as well. For a lot of patients, making a decision between doing one mastectomy versus both mastectomies is a personal decision. Um, this can be guided by a number of things uh, where it becomes a little more scientific in the sense if someone's a genetic carrier, uh, potentially younger high-risk patients, uh, strong family histories, and, and additionally people have had multiple potentially biopsies, lumpectomies, or of course multiple lesions, then we start thinking more about recommending bilateral. Typically we defer to the surgical oncologist to guide these decisions and then of course the, the patient themselves make, make uh, drive these decisions. Um, but ultimately, if someone's making that decision from a plastic surgery standpoint, then, uh, ult then what we're trying to do is provide symmetry. Um, I, I would not say that someone needs to get bilateral mastectomies to get symmetry, though. Uh, we are able to do a symmetry procedure if someone undergoes a unilateral mastectomy, we're able to do a surgery on the contralateral breast to try and achieve symmetry. And that might, may, may even mean placing an implant, can mean a breast lift, can mean a breast reduction, a whole slew of different options. What I do is I let the patients decide if they want one or both sides. So if the cancer is not on another side, uh, it's their ultimate decision. Uh, so I actually, in a situation, or I have a bias that I don't recommend patients to remove the normal contralateral breast. It is their breast and it's what they want. So I work with what they want. Now I will say that it is slightly easier to reconstruct both breasts in a similar fashion, in similar techniques, because the symmetry will be improved. Uh, however, you can have twice as many complications as well, given the fact. So uh, I think we can work uh, around their decision. Uh, if they're going to have one side removed, then we can most likely match it to the other side, but using your own tissue, generally speaking. So it's a common concern that, that patients uh, want to look normal after surgery and then the other thing is of course uh, symmetry. They want both breasts to look the same and, and people deem that as looking normal. Um, with modern times there are a number of options to allow people to look normal and in some situations we're able to achieve improved aesthetic results in the sense of a, a more youthful and lifted breast. Um, and that's, that's available with kind of all of the options that we have for breast reconstruction. I like to say it's the new normal. Um, none of us are normal in a lot of ways, but you know, after breast cancer, after mastectomy or lumpectomy and radiation, chemotherapy, the bodies change. Uh, even if the breasts are not removed, the uh, body ages, the skin changes. So, you know, normal is a life's continuance of change. So they're going to experience another change, and it is going to be a little bit drastic, but. I hope that it is uh, towards a more positive outcome that the cancer is behind them. So there are a number of options when we talk about breast reconstruction. To simplify it, there's two broad categories, and that, uh, those two are implants and flaps or your own tissue. And we can divide each of those categories out into a whole slew of other options. When we talk about implants, we have saline implants, we have silicone implants. When we talk about silicone implants, we have round implants, we have shaped implants. 
So depending on what the patient is looking for, the approach to the mastectomy, we can use a whole world of these various types of implants. Flip gear is when we talk about using a patient's own tissue. This means we're taking tissue from somewhere on the body with blood supply and moving it to the breast. And theoretically, the entire breast is then being reconstructed with just their own tissue. There is an alphabet soup of options. The most common that we do is called a deep flap. That stands for deep inferior epigastric perforator flap. And that comes from the tummy, where we can take tissue from the tummy and bring it up to the breast, and then use that tissue, skin and fat only, from the tummy to reconstruct the entire breast. Um, there are other options. One of the other ones we do commonly is a pap flap. It comes from the posterior thigh. That's a profunda artery perforator flap. And we can use that to do total reconstruction as well. The categories of choices still remain the same, using foreign tissue like implants and uh, your own tissue from your body. And there's combination where you can combine the two. There are other adjunct techniques like fat grafting and uh, you know, uh, that, that can incorporate as part of the practice, but those two main categories still exist even after decades of reconstruction. I think when choosing a plastic surgeon for breast reconstruction, you need to look for a couple of uh, key things. Uh, the first one is, of course, you want to go to someone who's board certified. Um, that means they've been vetted by the Board of Plastic Surgery, um, they're experienced, and, and they should be qualified to do this surgery. The second thing you want to think about is you want someone who actually does breast reconstruction. There are uh, plenty of people uh, around the world that do a little bit of breast reconstruction or dabble in breast reconstruction. But I think the key is that you want to go to someone who this is their passion. This is what they do on a daily basis. And, and because of that, those people are going to give you better results, you know, shorter surgeries, and just better outcomes in general. Well, I believe they have to be board certified in plastic reconstructive surgery, have the appropriate training, uh, that they're professional, that they listen to your needs that they're sensitive uh, about what you want. And it's a two-way conversation. I never make a final decision of what a woman should have. I think it is a mutual decision where they take a particular very important role. It is their body. And then I can kind of guide them to one way or the other depending on what they want at that particular time in their life. And short term or long term. So they need to be able to talk to a honest, professional plastic surgeon with experience um, and who are also creative. And we find that many plastic surgeons are and they, they, can, uh, they can provide the needs for the patient. In preparation for any breast reconstruction, I think it's important to do your homework. And that goes back to picking a surgeon, uh, just deciding what route you want to go with the process. It's certainly a very overwhelming process. So ask questions, make a list of questions, and, and make sure you are as formed as you can be to proceed with the surgeon um, and, and your chosen path. Um, other than that, uh, the, the goal ultimately is for you to be a healthy person. So anything that can uh, make you healthier is going to make you do better. That, that can mean eat more protein, don't smoke, things like that. Just general health. If you have diabetes, control your diabetes. All of those variables will help your surgical outcome in general, but specifically to breast reconstruction, it is extremely overwhelming. So just do your homework, be comfortable with your choice and your surgeon. I think one is to be emotionally strong, as you know, uh, uh, the patients are. They've been diagnosed with cancer, or if they've not been diagnosed with cancer, they have a genetic predisposition, that they have family support. Uh, and I think it is important to go through these reconstructive surgery with a best friend, a family member who can guide them through the process of surgery and healing. And so I, I tend to focus on the support system because the bodies ultimately heal. We have all the things and all the tools to make them go through surgery, but an emotional and a physical component part is going to happen after surgery in their homes, in their normal lives. Uh, you know, obviously we don't want them to smoke and obviously we want them to be as healthy as possible uh, and have a positive attitude towards reconstruction because ultimately it's still a choice and given the choice, it, there are going to be some challenges and difficulties and we're going to be there to help them. The difference between recovery when we compare implants and natural tissue or a flap uh, depends a little bit on where the location is and what, what tissue we take. It also, of course, depends on the patient. Uh, recovery is certainly patient-specific. 
theoretically, implants are an easier recovery. Um, in most situations with implants, we're able to go through the same incision as a tissue expander was placed. A tissue expander comes out, implant goes in, and most people don't have a lot of pain. Now, that being said, in my patients, I offer pretty much everyone fat grafting, which then means now all of a sudden we're not just operating on the breast, we are now operating on a different part of the body. So that means there is a recovery from that. So that means liposuction of the thighs or the tummy or something like that. And while that's not a big recovery, it is some downtime and it is some discomfort. So what I typically will quote patients is, they're usually pretty good by about three or four weeks. And I restrict them for four weeks. If we go with shaped implants, then I ask that they wear a bra for four weeks and I ask that they don't do anything strenuous for, for four weeks. And the reason for that is we don't want those implants to rotate. They're designed to, spick, to sit as a very specific way and anything that's too aggressive or too much motion can cause those to rotate. Um, in contrast for the flap surgery or using your own tissue, most of the recovery is dictated by the donor site, not necessarily the breast. The breast people typically tolerate very well. It's more of the tummy or, or uh, in a deep flap or the back of the thighs and a pap flap. And in those situations, we typically restrict people for six weeks. And that's to avoid any wound problems or uh, any internal problems or anything like that. But after six weeks, most people can go back to pretty normal activities. So implant surgeries are generally shorter surgeries. Uh, and your own tissue surgeries are longer surgeries. Uh, but implant surgeries, uh, their short-term aspects are different than the own tissue. The own tissue takes longer time healing. They're scarred a different part of the body. Uh, generally, the breast does not uh, hurt as much. In an implant-based surgery, there's a little bit more pain involved in how we do that, and we're working with structures like bones and ribs and muscle, and so there tend to be a little bit more soreness. So I think one way or the other, the patients uh, do generally fine as long as they know what they're getting into um, and that they have good support for this. When people are considering implants, there's a number of uh, pros and cons. Um, uh, specifically for the advantages, is it's, it's typically a more simple surgery than some of our alternatives. Um, if a tissue expander has been placed, then we go back through that same mastectomy incision, we remove the tissue expander and the implant goes right in. That can be done in potentially an hour. Um, so it's a relatively quick surgery, minimal downtime in the sense of, of pain and recovery. Um, and the implants can, can look great. It can give a very youthful breast. Um, that being said, there are, of course, some negatives. So for an implant, it feels different than a natural breast. It feels like a silicone implant. While some people like that, it can be a little bit firmer and it can be a little bit uncomfortable for some patients. Probably the biggest negative related to implants is, unfortunately, we call them a permanent implant, but there's really no such thing as a permanent, permanent implant. So at some point, these implants will fail. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We typically quote a 10 to 12 year uh, survival for these implants. So for a lot of patients, and as we start diagnosing earlier and earlier cancers and younger patients with genetics and such, these patients are looking at surgeries later in life regarding their breast and their reconstruction. So we do have to think about that. So the pros for implants is they're shorter surgery. Um, Patients have lots of choices these days from different implant companies and different shapes and sizes, and implants have come quite a long ways over decades. Uh, they're safe. Uh, they have relatively longer lives now in terms of you know, implants and foreign bodies. Uh, so uh, patients can choose an, a, a shape, a size, a volume, a projection, and lots of dimensions. But it has to work with their body. It has to work with their chest. It works with their... Uh, clothing and so those are one of the biggest advantages. This advantage is that there's still foreign bodies. Things like infection and implant failures do exist and uh, as I say that uh, putting a foreign body in a human just like a hip replacement or a heart valve it's not going to last forever and there may be a likely need for other surgeries. When considering doing uh, natural tissue reconstruction or, or reconstruction with your own tissue, there are a number of uh, advantages and disadvantages. So the biggest advantage to going this route is that it's your own tissue. You don't have an implant, no foreign object you have to worry about. It is your own skin and fat from a different part of your body. Typically that skin and fat will feel very similar to a breast. So that means soft, pliable tissue um, and more comfortable because it actually integrates and becomes part of the patient. The other uh, great advantage is once we get that tissue from point A to point B, meaning if it's the tummy, we're bringing it from the tummy to the breast, it is there forever. So there's a, it, there's a great advantage to that. It'll be there 30 years from now. 
Um, the downsides, of course, relate to the donor site. Um, so in contrast to an implant where we take something off the shelf and put it in a patient in a flap, we're borrowing tissue from another area. That means a scar in another location. That means wound healing in another location. So there is some negative to that, some downtime. That being said, many people will flip that around and you know, in the tummy, for, uh, for instance, uh, in a deep flap, uh, people will, will quote that it's similar to a tummy tuck. And while it is similar, because you'll get a contour improvement, it's not the same. So it's, it depends on how you view that in the sense of is that a disadvantage, is it a pro, and, and kind of your, your goals in life. So natural tissue is soft, it's warm, uh, it may provide sensation. Uh, and patients find that they can adjust their clothing and their, and their lives a lot better around the own tissue. The disadvantage is that there's a scar in a different part of the body, whether it's the buttock, the thigh, the back, uh, or the hip. Uh, you know, those scars do remain, but you know, those scars do eventually fade away. Uh, once the own tissue works, and there's a very high success rate for these reconstructions now in, in very good hands, uh, then it's a lifetime guarantee for that tissue. It will age and change according to the person. So there are a number of options when we talk about natural tissue breast reconstruction or, or a number of terms, autologous tissue or flap surgeries. The most common, at least in, in our practice, is a deep flap, and that stands for deep inferior epigastric perforator flap. Um, and that's a, a mouthful, but what that stands for is the blood vessels that supply, uh, that, that keep alive your skin and fat on your tummy. So we're able to take that skin and fat uh, off your tummy with those blood vessels and bring it up to the breast. That's certainly the most common because most people have a little bit extra tissue there and are happy to get rid of it. For our patients that have either had previous surgery in that location, maybe they've had a tummy tuck, um, maybe they've had liposuction and they're very thin there, or maybe they're a marathon runner and they, they just were really thin in their tummy. Most of those patients will have another site that we can find tissue. The most common in our practice for that is a profund artery perforator flap, a PAP flap. And that is a, uh, it's an elliptical uh, skin, piece of skin and fat that comes from the back of the thigh and the inner thigh. And we're able to take that just like we just said about the deep flap and bring that up to the breast for total breast reconstruction. Um, that's certainly the, the most common in our practice of second options. Um, there are some others that we can consider if those aren't available, but in 99.9% .9 of patients, one of those will work. The main categories are using tissue from the abdomen. It's a very popular standard way of using. If uh, someone has just a little bit of a tissue, then we can modify and use combination surgeries. Uh, another area tends to be the inner or posterior thigh. Another area is the hip or the buttock region, and a very popular method is the back surgery where one can take a portion of uh, the latissimus muscle and also the skin and bring it around and, uh, and reconstruct. So those are still the categories of uh, or your own tissue um, in, in the trunk. So Dr. Tiosh and I work together routinely doing these uh, larger flap type breast reconstructions. And there are a number of advantages when we do that. Uh, probably the, the biggest advantage is it's a shorter operation. So we're able to work simultaneously. One of us starts on the recipient site, meaning the breast. One of us starts on the donor site, typically the tummy or the thighs. And because we can work in concert, it's gonna speed it up. And we've been able to shave you know, hours off of these operations. Um, so that's probably the biggest advantage. Um, another one is that these are complex procedures that take some time and uh, it, it also occurs in other specialties, but when you have to troubleshoot in a long complex operation, it really helps to have another brilliant mind next to you uh, who is uh, technically capable and thinking alike you in the same realm where you can achieve the you know, uh, success for the patient. So, there's a thousand decisions to be made in most surgeries and in something like this, the stakes are high as well. And so we can maneuver around and be creative uh, and come up with a plan that works for that patient for that particular time. So co-surgery is vital and uh, uh, we don't operate uh, uh, separately uh, any longer in something as uh, long and complex as this. So a lot of patients uh, worry about having drains after reconstruction. And the truth is, is almost no matter what route you go, you're gonna have some sort of a drain for a short period of time. At the time of mastectomy, drains are gonna be placed. 
at the time of a secondary reconstruction, and most types, a uh, drain is going to be uh, placed. Um, so when flaps are done, drains are placed. At least in my patients, when I do uh, shaped implants, I place drains. Um, the truth is, it is in for a very short amount of time. That may be one week, could be as much as three weeks. But in the grand scheme of life, it's a very short amount of time, and most people tolerate them very well. Generally, most patients need drains because uh, after surgery, there's an extra and a hollow cavity and fluid tends to build up. And uh, anytime a tissue is injured, uh, the body's ability to heal is to ooze uh, tissue and ooze fluid. And so we collect that through these plastic things called drains that exit out of the body. And they're not there for long, but I know they're inconvenient, but they're necessary so that the body heals uh, internally and doesn't have the extra dead space for the fluid to collect because any extra fluid collecting can get infected and can be painful and can have persistent swelling. So uh, we certainly use drains for most surgeries. In many situations, the nipples have to be removed at the time of mastectomy. And that relates to the location of the cancer, the type of the cancer, and, and the specifics of the breast anatomy. In those situations, there is always an option for breast uh, for nipple reconstruction. Now, that typically is the final surgery that we do in the reconstructive process. Um, so that may be a few months after after each uh, step, and then at that at a later time, once that's healed, we can come back and we can do a tattoo. As a complete alternative to that, some patients will do a 3D tattoo, and in that situation, there is no actual projection. So we don't actually do a nipple reconstruction and give the projection but a tattoo mimics it and gives the, the appearance of three dimensions. So there's really two options when we, when we talk about nipple reconstruction. If the nipples can't be spared, then means that they're concerned enough that whether the cancer is close to it or whether their cancer is advanced or whether there's a certain type of cancer that may have predisposition towards coming back. And I tell patients, even if they spare the nipples, you know, there can be an extremely small chance the cancer can come back around the nipple area. So. Uh, the techniques are very safe. The, uh, the biopsies are done underneath the nipple so that if somebody wants to save it, that it's a very high chance its uh, cancer won't come back. But I have to remind them, even after a non-nipple sparing mastectomy, cancer can come back. So, uh, you know, having the nipple removed doesn't mean the cancer can come, cannot come back. So there's small chances that it can. So sparing the nipple is a great advantage for the aesthetic outcome. But if they don't have it, um, we generally have techniques where we can reconstruct a nipple uh, or we can do 3D tattooing where it's not a projection type of nipple but the shadows look very real and so the patients feel as if that they have a color and a projection and they have a semblance.